Maverick is a ride that is somewhat nostalgic for me. I became addicted to coasters in 2005 as I visited Cedar Point a lot being my home park. I decided to start riding coasters and the year after that speculation arose about Cedar Point's next coaster. Things were really fueled when Red Intamin Track showed up at the hotel off property. So this was my first taste of roller coaster speculation really. So that's pretty awesome. And and Maverick is definitely an awesome ride. So today I'm going to be reviewing Maverick, giving my overall thoughts on the ride, what I like about it, maybe some things that could be improved. So stay tuned. Maverick is a pretty short ride that really packs a punch. This is one where the size is kind of deceiving. It is only 105 feet tall, the drop is 100 feet, but it has a great 95 degree drop, so it's beyond vertical, and you get a crazy pop of ejector airtime, especially if you're sitting in the back seat. Maverick is a multi-launch Intamin Blitz coaster. It has two launches. The first one is actually sort of a lift hill. It's an LSM lift hill, so it propels you up to the top very fast. I kind of think of it as sort of in between, you know, a cable lift and what you would think of as a typical launch. It's pretty fast, but it's not like an intense launch, but it definitely whips you over the top very quick, and that's awesome. And then the second launch is where you hit your top speed of 70 miles per hour. Maverick has a track length of 4,450 feet, so it's a very long ride features two inversions. When it was announced, it was originally announced to feature three inversions. There was going to be a heartline roll after you come out of the left-hand curve following the second launch, but it was found to cause too much stress on the track and it would have been too forceful for riders, so it was ultimately removed. So it features two inversions, which is the twisted horseshoe roll, essentially two corkscrews that go in the opposite direction consecutively. Maverick is a long ride. It's very smooth. It's fast, it's very quick, has lots of really quick transitions, so you're just getting whipped to left and right, and it does not focus on airtime, but there's a couple really strong moments of ejector airtime. Some of the best airtime in the park as far as quality of airtime goes. After you go on the first 95 degree drop, you go around this S curve, then you hit a camelback hill, which provides an awesome moment of ejector airtime. And then that's when you go into the horseshoe roll, and then you turn right into the second launch. You stop for a few seconds, and then you have these lights that start the flash and some cool effects in there. And then you hit that 70 mile per hour launch, and the acceleration is really quick on that. It's awesome. You get whipped to the left, you go up a hill, and then you drop down a twisted drop to the right over the lagoon. And then you have a couple more twists and turns. And then an awesome ejector bunny hop to end the ride before you slide up into the brakes. So Maverick really has a lot going for it. Maverick is really one of the most intense coasters that I've been on. Despite its small stature not being a huge ride, this really serves as a great example of how a ride doesn't have to be record breaking to be a great ride. I look at rides like Maverick and Valraven and it's just day and night to me. Valraven is a huge dive coaster standing at 223 feet tall and I just find it so forceless and I was just really disappointed by my experience on Valraven. Maverick on the other hand is a really intense ride lots of interesting elements, some great airtime, just all around really good. The restraints on Maverick, actually when it opened, used to be these hard over their shoulder restraints and they were kind of uncomfortable. I don't remember having a huge issue with them, but they were slightly uncomfortable. And in 2013, they were replaced with soft over the shoulder restraints. And these are great. I-305 has the same exact ones, and these are really comfortable. You don't really get any head banging, so I don't have any problems with them. Maverick took the spot of the former classic log flume, Whitewater Landing. The Whitewater Landing loading station was utilized as you walk through the queue in that building. A lot of the queue is housed in that the old Whitewater Landing Station. So that's really cool that they were able to incorporate that into Maverick to sort of pay tribute to that. You still have the Whitewater Landing logo even on the roof and that's really cool. 
Maverick is a very well presented ride. Doesn't have a lot of theming, being Cedar Point, so it's not fair to base any of this review off of the theming really. But the little theming that is there is very well presented. Aesthetically, it's a very nice ride, and it just has a great atmosphere surrounding it. The operations on Maverick are great. Maverick has five trains, and Usually it's running most or all of the trains, so it definitely has a great capacity. Even if the line's fairly long on this, it moves pretty quick. Maverick is one of my favorite roller coasters to date. It's generally considered to be one of the best coasters in the world, and I definitely would have to agree. Maverick is going to get an overall score of 9.5 out of 10 for me. It does have some reliability issues, being an Intamin and having a couple launches. It goes down somewhat frequently, but not too often, it's not real hard to get on this ride. And overall, it's a near perfect ride. Has a couple awesome airtime moments, a lot of intense twists and turns, and it's just a really fun ride. So let me know in the comments what you think of Maverick. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more roller coaster and amusement park content. I've got lots of reviews coming in the near future, so stay tuned for that. Be sure to follow me on Facebook, Coaster Daddy, and Instagram as Coaster Daddy Official. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.